what does it look like to interview for a UM job? Yeah, so um, definitely what my process and I interviewed, I had, um, I, I guess it's okay at this point, I'll just name the names who I interviewed with, I think that's fine. So I interviewed before I got my current position with um, Elevance, it was Cigna, you know, um, I made through those um, process. So with Cigna, I just had like screening interview. Um, mm-hmm. And I think in that process, it was very, um, oh, I guess I had also a screening interview with um, Aetna uh, CDS, I think they're mm-hmm. together. So those processes, um, and and. I guess in, I feel like in the clinical world, a screening interview is more casual. And I, I would just say in this world, take the screening interview very seriously. Because I think specifically the screening interview I had with like Cigna and um, uh, the Edna CVS, those were like the two I did at first. And I would say I was not ready. I don't think I don't think I was ready on the level that mm-hmm. I needed to be mm-hmm. at all. Um, and then when I got to Elevance, and those are the two interviews I had where I actually went through the whole process, I was ready. Yeah. I was ready. So um, take your screening in- interviews very seriously. Don't, I, again, I, I think in the clinical world, maybe they're a little more casual. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what it looked like for me was talking to the a screener. Um, I almost had like an elevator pitch ready for those. I mean, to me, that's how serious they were. They, um, you know, would talk to me about, um, even in the those ones I had, like some basic information about salary, asking me some basic questions about that. Um, So definitely have a little bit of prep for a screen interview. Maybe they'll be casual. Mine weren't. They were, I feel like, asking me some kind of really basic kind of interview questions, some of those. And then when I went advanced to the next process, it was very structured. Um, They started out with the hiring manager for those two um, interviews. And then um, once I got through the hiring manager, it was a lot of interviews. And I think that's uh-huh. the one thing um, compared to like the clinical realm that I I honestly, I don't think I was as prepared for because I was, of course, I was still seeing clinical, I was still doing my clinical job. And I had if to- I remember, Yeah, if I remember it correctly, so, um, the clinical interviews are pretty straightforward, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't think it was that many of them. I mean, and I don't yeah. know if it's just the nature of doing it online as opposed to if you could go in person and like have an interview panel. But I had like multiple, you know, individual interviews and it was actually a challenge for me to try to schedule around all of the interviews. I would mm-hmm. say on average, I had interview individually with like five different people. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, when you have a full day clinic trying to schedule like over lunch or, you know, at the end of the day. And again, in UM, you have a much more flexible schedule. Like today, it would be easy for me to take a meeting. So their schedule is much more flexible than how mine was. So trying to accommodate for that, it was a real challenge. Um, and then with my current, so those, those were the two interview processes I went through. Of course, I did not get those roles. And then with my current company, the job I work now, very similar. Unfortunately, um, I didn't get to meet with a hiring manager first. There was some like logistical issues. So I was, I had a whole prep that I usually would do all my questions with the hiring manager. And I didn't know the last minute that I wasn't meeting with him. So then I was just meeting with some who are now my coworkers. So it was a little bit awkward. It, the prep didn't go as well. Mm-hmm. And um, they didn't know that I didn't know what the role was. Because typically the hiring manager kind of inter- does all that. Yeah. So I didn't know this was a new team. And so like, for example, I was prepped to ask the questions um, of an established role. And so like, I'm yeah. asking these questions, they didn't know because the role didn't exist yet. So I would say like, how many typical cases do you do during a day? We don't know because we've never done this role before. <laughs> it was a very awkward interview. And honestly, I didn't know how I did because they didn't have an answer to a lot of the questions I was asking. And it just didn't flow very well. But and that's she was okay, but that's also across the board. Um, I think in clinical medicine, when you go for an interview, you are pretty clear what you're getting into. Um, and um, as far as non-clinical jobs are concerned, in utilization management, I think that somehow they um they expect you to know everything and aren't prepared to give you answers about much. Right. So you go in thinking that they are going to tell you about the job. And they are already thinking that you probably already know that's why you're here. (laughs) That's what my understanding is, because a lot of interviewees will come back and say, my questions were not answered. (laughs) 
Yeah. And I think I felt like I got the most from the hiring manager when I would talk to people who would like be, be your colleagues or other people in like within the business, they know their business, they may not know your role. So yeah. I would say that's one tip I would say, um, you know, look up your interviewees if you if the people are going to interview you if you can. That's what I did. So and just understand and then ask them. That's what I would do. I would ask them like, okay, if I was to get this role, how would I interface with you? And then try to tailor your questions to that because that's what they're going to know the most. Um, and then like the hiring manager or someone if it exists your role in your role, ask them how your typical day would be and all that. I definitely got behavioral interview questions. Um, and so I was already prepped for those at the VA hospital system. We have that. So I was very familiar with that process. So how I prep for that is I had about four or five scenarios memorized. I had them written down too, but I had them memorized. And they were the kind of scenarios that you could answer for a lot of different questions. So, you know, like, tell me about a conflict. So I had a couple of different scenarios I could answer with that, like memorized. Um, you know, tell me about a time, you know, that you overcame some type of difficulty, I had a couple memorized that I could use that because that question could be asked different ways. So I feel like I tend to do pretty well on those because I prep those ahead of time that I can kind of finagle to answer different behavioral interview questions. I got those on every interview I went on. So again, I don't know if that's been your experience, but I got behavioral interview questions on all of the interviews I went on. I think um, fewer for me. I'm family medicine. Maybe that's why. Oh, okay. Maybe because psychiatry. Good, good point. That could be. Um, maybe it's a psychiatry thing. I got them on everyone that I, um, maybe not every interviewer, but someone along the way asked me a behavioral interview question. I didn't even think about that, but that's probably true because it's psychiatry. 